Hi, this is Jamie Stegmeier from Stonemeyer Games, and I'm here today to talk about my favorite mechanism in the Big Book of Madness. The Big Book of Madness is a cooperative deck building game where players are um, basically trying to close this this magical book that they've opened, and it's it's essentially Harry Potter, the real card game. Um, and it's a good game. I, I enjoyed it. I played it a few weeks ago. And uh, I, uh, I, I've had cooperative games in my mind a lot lately because I want to design a cooperative game and I haven't yet. And so I was really paying attention to the mechanisms of this game as, as I was playing. And for me, it's like when I play a cooperative game, some of the things I look for are um, like A, is there quarterbacking, which is when the, one player basically takes over and tells everybody else what to do. Um, Cooperative games do different things to, to combat quarterbacking. One of the most common nowadays is to have a traitor mechanism. If you have a traitor, then even if there's someone quarterbacking, then that player uh, doesn't really have all the information because everyone's acting, it's at least one player is acting on their own accord. Um, the other thing I look for in cooperative games is uh, do players really need one another? Are you, are you truly cooperating uh, and working together to achieve a common goal? Um, and what, what types of interactions do those, does that lead to when, you, when you're working together? And that usually that goes hand in hand with the quarterbacking or almost in opposition to the quarterbacking. Because if you have a quarterbacking problem in a cooperative game and uh, the quarterback is just telling other players what to do, it, it's really not very fun, even if those players are helping each other, because it doesn't really feel like interaction then. You're just following the leader. Anyway, Big, Big Book of Madness does something really clever that I really like um, that, that does help this issue. And that is, and it really addresses maybe the, more, the second issue a little bit more. It doesn't help quarterbacking all that much. There can still be quarterbacking in Big Book of Madness. But what it does there is you have a hand of cards that you don't show other players. You feasibly, feasibly, you could tell other players everything that you have in your hand, but you're not supposed to, um, which is kind of a, a loophole way of getting around the quarterbacking issue. But I really like what Big Book of Madness does to uh, help players work together, which is you can store cards in the game. So say you take your turn, um, one of the actions you can take is to, instead of playing a card from your hand, you can put it in front of you and store it. And every player has limited slots to do that. I think most players have three slots where they can store cards. And what that means is that you're not using that card, it's just out there in front of you. And then any player, as the game continues, so you end your turn, the next player goes, other players go around the table. Any of those players on their turn can use your card in addition to the cards they're playing. So say a player needs uh, three blue magic, but they only have one in their hand. They might look around the table and see that there are two other blue cards that have been stored by other players. And maybe that's just luck. Maybe I just had some extra time on my turn. I didn't need that blue card, so I put it out there in the hopes that someone else would need it. Or maybe, maybe we talked about it. Maybe as a group, we said, okay, we see this bad thing coming up soon, and the Big Book of Madness does that. It kind of tells you some information about things that you're going to be um, working against in, in, in the future. So you might look around and say, okay, I see that's coming up, but I know that when it gets to me, I'm not going to be able to solve it. I won't be able to fight against that, that monster because I don't have enough blue cards in hand. So some other people might start putting blue cards out. This creates a really nice interaction between the other players because you're always kind of looking ahead. You're always working with other players and what they have in hand. You're uh, deciding which problems are the most important to deal with now versus later. And it all comes down to that concept of stored cards where you can use the cards that, that I've stored or, and I can use the cards that you've stored as if they were in my hand. I think this is really clever. It's a simple mechanism. It's, it's super simple. I think other cooperative games that use cards could use the same thing. Um, I guess the one question is, could you do the, that same uh, mechanism without actually needing the storage idea of it? Like, can I just use, on, on anyone's turn, can, could someone say, hey guys, I'm looking for 
for three green cards. I, I've only got one. Can anyone help me out? And other players could just play them directly from their hands. I think that has merit and it could work, but there is a nice visual element um, as you're planning ahead to your turn to actually be able to see those cards out there on the table. And also there's a cost to doing so. You have to, you have to spend a mana or whatever the game calls it to actually get that card out there in the first place. So it's not just a freebie that you can do at any time, which might make the game too easy. There's a cost to it. So I think, I think the storage method is better than just letting all players essentially share a common hand. I love this mechanism. If you play Big Book of Madness, I'd love to hear what you think about it or other cooperative games that you think do a great job at um, making players actually work together to solve problems. Um, and not only just making players work together, but also giving them a specific way that they can work together. Thanks for your thoughts. I'm looking forward to the comments. Bye.